Hello, my name is George Papadopoulos, and I'm the Vice President for Sensors and Embedded Systems for Innovering. I'm also the Principal Investigator for the Autonomous Flight Termination System Development with focus on submarine launched missile applications. This is an SBR effort supported by the Navy's Strategic System Programs Office. Innovering combines decades of experience primarily in hypersonic propulsion and flight. Sensors and embedded systems support our mission to become a high-speed propulsion company. We have enjoyed significant growth over the past several years as we advance technology to support our nation's military and commercial needs. We have delivered on numerous SBIR projects that have graduated to phase two. These programs have allowed us to build up a portfolio of capability as we focus on solutions that have a path towards flight vehicle integration. An autonomous flight termination system brings the decision-making regarding safety on board the vehicle. The transition to autonomous operation has been occurring over the past several years, with milestones set by Eastern and Western U.S. ranges to go fully autonomous in the near future for all launches. The current effort is supporting making the transition for the NAV SSP Trident T5 vehicle. This is a submarine launch platform that introduces some additional challenges as we look to deliver on a system that must comply with all applicable space launch range safety requirements. Our focus is to assemble a Gen 1 prototype unit this year that can be tested in flight to provide initial relevant environment feedback. The FTS safeguards against a missile traveling outside of its intended trajectory in the event an anomaly occurs. The legacy approach has relied on man-in-the-loop operation with significant range assets, monitoring and assuring destruct signal delivery to the missile during its flight. The Autonomous Flight Safety System, or FSS, monitors the flight path relative to prescribed rules and boundaries and automatically commences destruct if a violation occurs. The submarine launch scenario increases complexity of implementation for FSS as the launch is now from a mobile platform that is submerged. Our solution is an embedded system module that incorporates the latest system on a chip technology along with safety island architecture to protect against single points of failure while enabling versatility to address both legacy and future vehicle needs. The complete FSS architecture adapts existing FTS onboard components along with tracking sensors to a new module that provides the decision-making capability for command destruct output. Our SBR phase two effort is focusing on this new module. The project is currently in its phase two period of performance, having already completed first stage of development for the wrapper code software. Design of the electronics that will support microprocessor operation is nearing completion, with board fabrication and assembly to occur by the end of Q2 of 2023. This assembly will yield our first integrated unit that can then be used to complete software development to accommodate planned hardware in the loop testing along with relevant environment flight testing. We list here some of the key features and benefits for the implementation of FSS. In regards to our approach, we are taking advantage of new microprocessor technology that provides long-term operational life along with multi-channel architecture that separates decision and execution functions for reliable single fault tolerant performance. Our FTU design will allow for handling mobile platform and submarine launch missile CONOPS as well as ground launched. As mentioned earlier, the program is currently in its phase two period performance. We have extended our effort to take advantage of flight test opportunities occurring in the fall of 2023 in connection with another project that will allow our Gen 1 AFTU module to ride along. This test will provide valuable feedback on how the hardware and software is performing under realistic dynamic conditions. Maturation of the system will require a rigorous qualification and certification process that is currently outside of the scope of the current effort. Mandatory migration to FSS by 2030 has been put forward by the Eastern and Western ranges. Migration to FSS by other ranges will follow as it becomes the operational norm. The focus on hypersonic vehicle system development over the past several years is driving the need for high tempo launches to support activities. Driving the cost down for ground and mobile based launches is critical and FSS is a key enabler. The race for affordable space launch and increased unmanned area vehicle use for cargo and other utility functions provide opportunities for implementation of the FSS core technology to assure public safety. 
We are looking for transition partners that can help us secure the next level of funding. This could be phase three or CRP funding to take our FDU technology through its qualification and certification process. We see great value for the hypersonic t and community to implement AFSS to reduce costs and enable high-tempo flight testing that may not be restricted to a small number of launch points. I thank you for taking the time to listen to our technology pitch. Please feel free to reach out for further discussions on this and other solutions we have in our portfolio. We are pleased to be participating at the Navy Sea, Air, and Space Conference and welcome the opportunity to meet up if you are in attendance. Thank you.